Good morning, everyone. I hope you are well today. It is lovely to uh, have you tuning in. Uh, wherever you are watching today, give me a hello in the comments. Let me know that you are here. And this is our new weekly segment. I say new, actually. It's more, um, it's more of a revisit because I actually used to do this um, segment back in... 2020, where I was live weekly speaking about UK business and the economy. And that started, I started that during COVID when things were changing a lot, but I thought it was probably a good idea to resurrect this segment, um, given, given that we do have quite a few things going on in those areas at the moment. So thank you for tuning in and thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it as always. Hey, Ashley Lees, thank you so much for saying hello hello uh, social media mark dress hello eloisa hello hunky dory coffee thank you all for um your hellos wherever you are watching today we are of course live um all over the place so thank you for uh tuning in i do appreciate that and as always i appreciate the hellos as well so like i said today i'm speaking about what's happening in the UK economy and uh, linking that to what's happening in business at this point in time as well. This will be a regular segment on Thursdays at 11 a.m. So do pop that in your diary. Now, if you're new to me, if you have stumbled across this video, if you do not know who I am, hello, my name is Annette Ferguson. I am CEO of Annette & Co, a UK-based accounting firm. I'm a chartered accountant, certified profit-first professional and small business growth strategist. And fundamentally, we support business owners to take home more money from their business for them and their families to enjoy. I have a few topics that I want to cover off today um, from stuff that has been going on over the last week. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go through the, each of those in turn. If you have any questions, queries for me, as always, please do leave a note in the comments. And also, if you enjoy this live stream. Wherever you happen to be watching, do give me some thumbs up, some hearts, some loves, some shares, all that good stuff. So the very first thing that I want to speak about today is um, the inflation forecasts by Citigroup, because Citigroup are saying that they believe UK inflation will return to 2% by the autumn. This is brought about by rapid falls in gas prices, um, and it's therefore hoped that the inflation will pull back down. It said on Wednesday that the consumer price inflation was likely to fall to 2.3% in November, which is, of course, well below the Bank of England's forecast that it would remain at around 4% for quarter four of this year. So some potentially good news in terms of cost of living, living and spiraling costs happening there with Citigroup's forecast. And Citigroup are often quite good with their forecasting. So let's uh, let's hope they nailed it this time around. And next, UK women have created a record number of companies in 2022. This is amazing, I think. <laughs> but I think it's a really, really great thing. There was something called the Rose Review that happened, and it found that female entrepreneurs are, however, still finding it hard to access financing. So in 2022, women in the UK launched 151,603 companies, which was up from 145,000 in 2021. And more than twice the level it was in 2018. This is according to an independent review held by Alison Rose, who's the chief exec of Nat West Group. Um, it is also noted that 250 billion could be added to the UK economy if women matched men in starting and scaling businesses. So in response, the government announced an ambition to increase the number of women launching companies by half by 2023. So that's the equivalent of nearly 600,000 female entrepreneurs. So there's a bit of a watch this space with that. And wouldn't it be incredible if female entrepreneurs were able to start and scale businesses at the same rate as their male counterparts? Now, really interestingly, this week, I have also been digging into actually our clients' results and actually comparing some of it on a male-female basis. Now, of course, I understand that many other genders exist, 
But I that's what we were going on. And that is what this report has gone on as well. So in looking at our data, the interesting thing that we have found is that male led companies have uh, tend to have a higher revenue than female-led companies. However, the interesting thing from our findings is that actually the female-led companies have higher take-home. So the women are actually taking home more money despite having a lower revenue in their business. Fascinating results, I think, certainly from that um, from that analysis of the data that we have, um, and it is going to be it will be great if we can see more women coming in to uh, business over the next few years as well. So it is believed that the chancellor is set to maintain personal tax rates despite windfall tax payments. So the Treasury has received a record tax receipts across income, capital gains tax and inheritance tax over the past year. But it's unlikely, in all honesty, that this will prompt tax cuts in next month's budget. Oh, I have an issue nose. That is, um, so self-assessment tax receipts reached $21.9 in January, which is a jump of one third on the previous year. Whereas uh, capital gains tax payments hits $13.2 in January, which is up 24% from the same month in 2022. Um, that, of course, does give the government a bit more money to play with in next month's budget. But in all honesty, we are not expecting any significant net tax cuts over the next fiscal period because the government have already said that their key is going to be reducing inflation. So it's unlikely that they'll um, have tax cuts because that may very well derail that approach that they are going for. And I'm just going to itch my very itchy nose. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Um, itchy nose, by the way, somebody told me that it means you're coming into money. So uh, maybe that's quite apt for <laughs> today's live session. Um, now, some more good news. British businesses have been reported to enjoy a surprise rebound after a six-month decline. So we're seeing rebound in February um, after decline in output prior to that. This is looking um, specifically at manufacturing and service activity. So the S&P Global um, SIPs Flash Composite Purchasing Managers Index, try saying that fast three times, the PMI, which tracks monthly changes in manufacturing and service activity, rose up to 63 this month from 48.5 in January. That is the highest level in eight months and is well above what analysts forecast at 49. So this reading was above the neutral mark of 50, which indicates that the majority of businesses have an expansion activity for the first time since July 2022. And Daniel Mahoney, the UK economist for Handelsbanken, said that it is much better than the anticipated PMI readings, and it could signal that forecasters are currently being too downbeat on short-term growth prospects in the UK economy. So potentially some positive things happening there. And we've also got some positive news or more positive news in UK retail sales as well. So UK retail sales grew in January um, in an unexpected sign of consumer resilience as holiday discounts boosted online sales and fuel prices continued to fall, official data shows us. So the the amount of goods sold in UK shops increased by 0.5 of a percent between December and January. Now, I agree that is not massive, but the reading was above the 0.3 percent fall forecast by economists polled by Reuters and therefore marks a rebound in sales after two successive months of decline. However, there is a big, bit of a sting here because compared to January 22, which is a less volatile measure in reality, sales volumes were down by 5.1%. But despite this drop, the value of sales, so the amount of money that consumers spend, rose by 4.1% year on year, as higher prices meant that consumers could buy less with their money. So there's a bit of a good news and bad news about that. Um, 
But the UK economy is now pointing to a mild recession, which may not sound like good news, but actually, six months ago, some economists were predicting an incredibly severe, long and deep recession. So a mild recession is not such bad news. So a flow of key data over the past 10 days has suggested that the UK economy is showing a level of resilience that was not evidenced just a few months ago. Inflation has fallen more than expected and the labour market has remained robust according to the latest data, which has left many economists anticipating the end to further interest rate rises by the Bank of England and a mild recession than previously predicted. So less inflationary pressure should boost real incomes and mean less financial tightening is required from the Bank of England themselves. Markets are still pricing in around about a 0.25 percentage point increase in interest rates when the bank's Monetary Policy Committee meets on the 23rd of March, but the expectations are growing that this might just be the last interest rate rise. Let's all cross all our fingers and toes for that one because that would be good news if that is indeed the last rise. So interestingly, HMRC are now chasing 4,300 social media influencers and online earners over tax. They've written to thousands of online traders, gamers, and influencers that they suspect have not been paying the right amount of money earned for their money right amount of tax rather for their money earned online. This is part of an attempt to keep up with the expansion of the digital economy and um, HMRC have basically written out these letters to content creators who they believe are making money or receiving gifts for posting material on platforms like Instagram, TikTok and YouTube. This includes people who have large followings, and as I said, receive gifts in exchange for promoting products, because that is something that tax is required to be paid on as well. And it also includes those who are paid by platforms on a basis of level of engagement that their content receives. HMRC also plan to send out a further 2,000 what they are calling nudge letters to people who sell goods and services to online marketplaces like eBay, Facebook and Etsy. So content creators have doubled to around 16 million in the UK between 2020 and 2022. And an Adobe report found that around 2.8 million UK influencers earn about £120 per hour on average. The thing is that online income above a thousand pounds of the tax free trading allowance needs to be reported. But in reality, many online content creators don't actually either realize this or understand that the income they are earning from the platforms needs to be taxed. And that is typically in this situation what is leading to a lot of people not reporting their earnings, particularly young people who are just making money out of content, perhaps they're even still at school, not understanding the implications and the tax implications for this. Um, on some slightly on some slightly worse news, most of the things I've been sharing so far are not so bad news, but on to some slightly worse news, and that is that restructuring experts are gearing up as inflation is driving insolvencies in business. So in December, corporate insolvencies rose sharply in England and Wales to reach 100, uh, 1,964, which is a third higher than the same month of 2021. And alarmingly 76% higher than December 19, which is probably a better um, year to base it on because it was a pre-COVID year. Um, so we are seeing an increase in insolvencies of 76%, which is of course huge. It's being put down to things like rising inflation, which is putting costs up for business and is acting as a catalyst for greater defaults. Inflation is also, of course, impacting consumer demand in some industries, which is giving a knock on effect to sales, particularly in the retail and construction sectors as well. Also, these sectors are 
usually simultaneously um, having high costs of raw materials, energy costs, and potentially labor issues as well. Now, over the COVID period, lenders have been quite sympathetic to companies who have been having issues, but that is becoming less so. There were 474 winding up petitions made last November, which is about four times as many as November 2021. And there, um, there was only 120 uh, in November 2021. So the first 11 months of 2022, there were 2,990, which is over three times the same the amount of the same period in 2021. Now, the distress that we're currently seeing, the insolvencies that we're currently seeing are actually amongst small businesses. And it is likely that all these things that I've spoken about already are impacting. But also what we are seeing with small businesses is that there are businesses who perhaps were not in the greatest of financial health pre-COVID. And we went into COVID and they took bounce back loans. Um, and a number of these companies probably would have actually, in reality, have been unlikely to secure funding prior to COVID. If the bounce back loans had not existed, it's unlikely the banks would have actually lent to them. And so what we are seeing now at this point in time and why it's crunch point now is because these loans have become repayable and people have used the tools that they have been allowed to to um, reduce their payments, extending to 10 years, um, reduce starting the repayments, and also done some interest only periods as well, and, and done all these things that they were, have been allowed to do, but all these mechanisms they've run out of time on, basically, and now they're having to repay full amounts every month, and it's causing a severe issue because ultimately these were loans that many, many businesses could never have afforded pre-COVID, yet they are now having to afford because they have taken them out during a COVID period to see their business through COVID. So it's really causing a real crunch in the business's cash flow. Now, if you are in that situation, the biggest thing to do is look at your spending where else you can cut spending so that you can manage your cash better and as a little plug if you have not already read the book profit first i highly 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 recommend that you go away and do that please 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 do that um you can we actually do have a uh digital copy of that so let me just um Put the URL it on the screen for those of you that are watching everywhere apart from Instagram on Instagram it won't be there but it's in my bio on Instagram um, so I will put it on the screen for everyone else that is watching so if you go to annetteandco.co.uk slash pf book you will be able to get a copy of the profit first book um, in pdf so I highly highly recommend that you do make sure that you look at that. Um, that will be helpful for you if you are in that situation. Um, and the next thing I want to speak about today is energy bills of businesses. So British companies are facing um, an energy bill cliff, basically, um, when the government support runs out in April, some businesses are going to um, have severe issues in reality with their energy bills. Companies up till now have been protected from elevated energy costs in the most part, um, but that will run out at the end of March. And although there is another scheme coming in, um, which lasts until April 2024, it is significantly less generous. So we are um, expected to see some businesses facing between a 70 and 80% increase in their power and gas bills, um, depending on the contract that they have. So that is going to cause some real issues um, for businesses. Potentially, it's worth getting in touch with energy companies now and seeing what you can negotiate, if anything, at least so you can understand the situation that your business may be in in a few months' time if you are um, a business that has... Um, that has uh, gas and power uh, usage um, and you don't work from home, for example. 
And finally, the final thing I want to speak about today is a four-day working week. So there have been um, a number of companies that have trialed in the UK a four-day working week, so flexible working. And more than nine out of 10 of those companies that adopted the four-day working week through the trial have said they will continue to use the more flexible way of operating. So out of the 61 companies that participated in the pilot, 18 said they would maintain a four-day working week on a permanent basis um, because of the evidence of the benefits from the arrangement. And a further 38 said they're going to continue with the trial. Um, so this is really fascinating because this really plays into um, a work-life balance for people, people um, wanting to live a more flexible life. So I think it's really, really um, great that um, that it seems to be working for people. In the trial, what, they, what the model was, was that the employees would get 100% of pay they would work 80% of the time, but their commitment was to deliver 100% of the output. So they were being paid the same amount for the same output, but they would work less hours. Fascinating that actually it seems to be working because the revenue at participating companies rose more than a third over the trial period compared with the same period in 2021. And the number of staff leaving companies fell significantly. So really, um, really interesting results there from that trial. Um, now I can see Lewis has asked a question here. So let me come to that and answer. And if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments. So Lewis says, if I start up a company with my mate, a limited company, what's the best way to pay yourself without paying a lot of tax and national insurance? Lewis, ultimately, the best way is, um, is usually through a mix of salary and dividend. But there's a lot of things that that might make that not the case in your particular circumstance. But that is the general rule. Now, the general rule is that you pay yourself a salary, ideally up to the personal allowance level, which is twelve thousand five hundred a year, and the rest of the money you take out, you take out as dividends. However, if you are paying yourself a dividend, the company needs to be profitable after tax because a dividend is an appropriation of tax, uh, an appropriation of um, profit, sorry, uh, uh, distribution of profit. And therefore, you need to make sure that you are profitable after tax as a business. Um, so that is that is typically the best way to do it, uh, Lewis, overall, when it comes to uh, running a limited company. Um, the business will also need to have the cash, of course, to pay the salary out to you. So uh, that is something to watch as well. If you put money into a business, if you're putting money in to start with, you can pay yourself back that money you put in. It's called a director's loan, and that is done free of tax consequences. So that can be a good way um, if you need to fund the business to start to then get money back out the business again. Um, so I hope that makes sense, Lewis. Uh, you're welcome. No problem at all. Um, so I hope that you've enjoyed this session today. Uh, what is happening now, UK econo economy and business update. Like I said, this is going to happen this session. We are going to do it every Thursday at 11 a.m. So do mark it in your diaries. Make sure you tune in then as well. And I also, of course, have a training Tuesday coming up on Tuesday at 11 a.m. as well. So uh, next week's training Tuesday's topic is why it's OK not to do everything yourself. So do, if you can, make sure that you join me also uh, wherever you happen to be watching today for training Tuesday too. And I will uh, look forward to that. But yes, so far we are doing Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. So mark it in your diary. Make sure you join me. Questions are always welcome. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have about business, um, about you know work-life balance, about money, about finances, about uh, accounting, all those good things, profit first and all that stuff. So please, uh, please do make sure you uh, join me for that. And I will see you all very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for the love, the hearts, the likes, the shares. I appreciate it all. Thank you so much. See you soon.